The Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or also known as SNCC, was made up of young, inspired individuals that seek for a social change. Most of them being college freshmen, they were well educated. Their main goal was to challenge segregation by disrupting the natural order and social norms during the 1960s and early 70s. Another objective of the organization was to intrigue students to participate in civil rights movement in order to gain support. To understand SNCC's purpose better, it is significant to know the key points and actions that gave the organization. SNCC would have never been founded if it weren't for the initial four Greensboro men that made a sit-in demonstration at a lunch counter of a Woolworth store in February 1st, 1960. Analyzing the sit-ins gives a better understanding behind the motivation and purpose of the demonstrations made by SNCC's organization across the United States. After the sit-ins gained national attention, Ella Baker sought to gather young individuals to help gain support as well as give them a voice in the civil rights movement. Utilizing younger participants as an advantage due to their greater energy, she helped guide the students to support the fight against discrimination demanding for social change. Ella Baker encouraged young Southern Blacks by sending out a letter stating the following. The courageous, dedicated, and thoughtful leadership manifested by hundreds of Negro students on college campuses, in large cities, small towns, and overwhelming support by thousands of other present new challenges for the future. This greater potential for social change now calls for evacuation in terms of, where do we go from here? In the rest of the letter, she explains how the sit-ins and demonstrations go farther than just a simple hamburger and drink, but rather a start of a movement that eventually spread across the nation. This was clarifying the fact that African Americans will no longer tolerate second-class citizenship in a country that forced them to fight in a world war, but denied them rights upon their return. Ella Baker took immediate action by a summit in Raleigh, North Carolina, which was the first step of effort into convincing students to gather and participate in a nonviolent demonstration against segregation. During the first summit, Ella Baker was still affiliated with Martin Luther King Jr.'s organization, which was the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, also known as SCLC. Within the document, she signs as executive director and Martin Luther King as president. It is also important to note that SCLC initially gave $800 worth of funding for the creation of SNCC prior to summit. The line that stands out the most within the organization's founding statement is, by appealing to conscience and standing on the moral nature of human existence, nonviolence nurtures the atmosphere in which reconciliation and justice becomes actual possibilities. When examined, we can clearly see that the intentions of SNCC was to follow Martin Luther King's steps of nonviolence and peaceful protests. Other significant figures to note that contributed to the creation of SNCC include Charles F. McDew, who led the student protests at Southern California State University, along with Charles Jones, who organized around 200 students to participate in sit-ins at department stores in Charlotte, North Carolina. SNCC members utilize student leadership along with creativity to spread news about the organization and the movement. One of their best literature pieces was known as the Student Voice. Their goal was to communicate SNCC movements as well as a reminder of SNCC nonviolent protest. The publications also include sections of fundraising methods, special stories, editor's choice, as well as highlights. By using newspapers, the organization was able to reach college students and many other African Americans that were motivated by the articles. SNCC was undoubtedly one of the best organizations during the fight for civil rights. Besides participating in their own sit-ins, they also contributed to organized freedom rights that eventually desegregated public transport and voting registration in Mississippi, which at the time it was dominated by white rule, meaning that African Americans had difficulty registering to vote due to their literacy test. They can also be credited for helping get Congress to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1964. From this, we can conclude that African Americans always struggle living in a nation that denied natural rights without any justification. Their fight for rights will always be remembered due to the unconstitutional actions committed towards these individuals that only wanted the simplest thing, which was to be treated equal like every other American citizen.